It's about the people who have died this year cycling on London's roads. Kevin Lane, age 52, in Woodford Green on the 8th of February. Nick Mason, age 70, on the 15th of March on Regent Street. 32-year-old Victor Rodriguez at Ludgate Circus on the 3rd of April. Leon Richards in Clapham on the 5th of April, age 26. And 37-year-old Admiral Kalak Kalayani at Ellison's Castle, right here on May the 13th. We've heard a lot of rhetoric from Boris Johnson and TfL about innovations, sorry, about improvements and safety. But we don't really see much of that happening on the ground. People still dying. HGVs are still using the same roads as cyclists during rush hour. And when Boris Johnson talks about the cycling revolution, I wonder if he understands what that means. The revolution cannot be forced on the people from above. Revolution is created by the people and forced on the authorities. And if that's what it takes to create a cycling revolution, this to me is a cycling revolution. What I see happening today, what I've seen happening at other popular cyclist events, that is the cycling revolution. You people are making that happen. Boris Johnson isn't making that happen. You are. Councils aren't making it happen. They're stuck in a mindset that prioritises the motor vehicles and they have, they have no clue about how to provide the cyclists effectively. And in many cases, our own recent research has shown that they can't even exhibit the slightest bit of common sense. The problem isn't with how or where people choose to cycle. The problem is with, is with the authorities responsible for those spaces that they cycle in. We know things take time, but sometimes they can take too much time. There are resources, there is money, and it's about time that money was spent on saving lives. Thank you. Thank you. Well done, Steve. Um, we all think it's important that the arts have a say in, in, in campaigns, human rights campaigns, and we are a human rights campaign. We should be able to cycle, our kids should be able to cycle in the streets without fear of their death. So we're now going to ask uh, Abby Tolbert, going to read a poem by Shane Sini, uh about the death of his uh, seven-year-old daughter, niece from a cycling accident. Thank you. Hi. I was really happy to, to be asked to, and to be able to read this poem. It's a beautiful poem, and I'm a mother. And every person here knows a family scarred by a road accident. I'm sure you do, because I know many. The only fear I've ever had for my son's safety is that he will be hit by a car. We all make mistakes, but when a car driver makes a mistake, it can be lethal. The Irish poet and Nobel laureate, Seamus Heaney, seven-year-old niece, Rachel, was killed by a driver while riding her bike in front of her family's farm on a May day 29 years ago. Every parent's nightmare. Jeannie wrote this poem about that, that 1985 summer when Rachel was killed. And if you can imagine it, 150 years ago, these were fields. There was lavender and potatoes exactly like the poem. And this is what we've got. No space at all left for anyone to walk and anyone to cycle. So the poem's called The Summer of Lost Rachel. Potato crops are flowering. Hard green plums appear on damson trees at your back door. And every buried briar is glittering and dripping. Whatever showers plout down on flooded hay and flooding drills. There's a ring around the moon. 
The whole summer was waterlogged, yet everyone is loath to trust the rain's soft soaking ways and sentiments of growth, because all confidence in summer's unstinting largesse broke down last May when we laid you out in white, your whited face gashed from the accident, but still, so absolutely still, the setting sun set merciless, and every merciful register inside us yearned to run the film back for you to step into the road, wheeling your bright red bike, safe and sound as usual, across then down the lane, the twisted spokes all straightened out, the awful skid marks gone. But no, so let the downpours flood our memory's riverbed until, in thick webbed currents, the life you might have led wavers and tugs dreamily as soft plumed waterweed, which tempts our gaze and quietens it, ever recollects our need. So I say, politicians and the CEOs of companies that use our money to build our shared environment have to ask themselves all day long, are my decisions good enough for my family? Elephant and Castle? No. No, it isn't good enough. Thank you. Thank you, Abby. As you know, last Monday on the terrible day when Abdel Kalek Layani was killed on this spot, there was another accident in, in London on Upper Thames Street. Bart Chan was uh, fell under the truck, sorry, was under the truck on this real bit truck. He cannot be here today because of that. And Will Nichols has brought some words from him to us, a brave man. So please give a welcome to Will Nichols. Thank you. Hello everyone. As Donald has just explained, Bart Chan was hit by a HCV on the same street of Tuesday of last week. As we speak, he's currently laying in a London hospital bed, wondering where it all went wrong. He prepared a few words for me to read, and these are his words exactly and completely unedited. My heartfelt condolences go out to the family and loved ones of the man who died here eight days ago. They are in my prayers, and I wish them peace of mind in their anguish. Their loss must serve as tragic evidence that HTVs simply do not belong in built-up urban areas. If London policymakers want to encourage more people to get into the saddle, then removing the threat of HTVs is one of the best places to start. Other major international cities have banned HTVs from central areas, either completely or restricted them to non-rush hour times. London must follow suit. As an extremely lucky survivor, who went under an HDV from front to back, I call on London Mayor Boris Johnson and other relevant authorities to ban HDVs from our busy streets for the good of all vulnerable road users. It would be magic wand reform. I thank every one of you for coming here today. You care about saving lives. You are committed and compassionate. We want the deaths to stop. And together, we can achieve our goal of making our streets much safer for cyclists. As cyclists, our hearts are our engines, our bicycles an extension of our bodies. We choose the kindest form of transport. We allow our city to breathe instead of filling it with more pollution. And we benefit from being fitter, happier and more productive. Deaths and injuries from HGV should not deter people from cycling, but encourage us in our struggle to ban them. HGV can be redesigned to remove blind spots, more segregated cycle lanes, and other measures must come as well to lower the number of cyclists being killed. It will be a challenge. Many will block reform, so it's up to compassionate cyclists like you to stay strong on the path to making the city a safer, happier, and cleaner place. I don't want to experience the trauma of being run over by HGV and I don't want that for anyone else. Please help this wish come about. The time is now to make change happen. Let us be the ones to bring about a cycling renaissance in London. Cycle home safely. Amazing.
That speech was written in the hospital bed in London this week. And he's still there. And um, there's so many other people in hospital because of acts like this. This is the final speech. Um, we're here today to mark what happened last week. Sometimes by, we, by mistake we use the word accident. This was not an accident. This was a designed in killing. It was a killing that was designed in by failures by national government, by London's government, and by Southern Council or local government. At national government, they allowed trucks the HGV truck that did the killing. The government is opposing including safety measures in the trucks that are on our streets. They could do it this month if they wanted to, and they have failed to do so, and that's why that truck was on that road last week. The European Union is trying to help us with new designs. Shamefully, almost every single, sorry, positively, almost every single MEP voted for it, except London's UKIP MEP voted against along with the other UKIP to their shame. And the only other people who are opposing the change in European legislation is our coalition Minister for Secretary for Transport. Patrick Lachlan is proposing to try and block it at the European Council. We are calling you today to block him and make sure the European Union helps us. TfL and the London Mayor because they spent three million pounds on this junction three years ago and they're telling the, the TV media today, they're telling the, telling the media people that they sorted this junction out. Anybody who cycles this junction wouldn't allow an eight-year-old to cycle this junction. It is not true, Mr. Daniels. You didn't sort this junction out. If you did, there would be this cycle bypass on every single left-hand turn. You failed us and you must stop failing us and you must get those emergency crews out and put these lanes in as soon as possible. The, <laughs> and the second thing that London level is doing, they keep telling us they're spending a fortune on cycling. Why do they do that? Because they add up 10 years' notional budget and then they tell you, oh, we're spending £900 million on cycling in London, aren't we brilliant? But they never tell you the caveat. The caveat is nine years' time and put three people's bud mayor's budgets into the future. And they don't tell you they're spending £30,000 on, on a proposed new one single road in London. They don't tell you they're spending £18,000 on one new railway in London. We are getting crumbs and they're telling us we're not we're getting loans. It's not true. We want real money, we want real money spent on cycling like they do in Holland. <laughs> and the final level of government that failed is public council. I've lived here for 26 years and we have failed to see them on the end of the administration. Tory, Lib Dem or Labour, they have failed to put the infrastructure in. But the last administration has a special place in my heart in terms of how angry I am. I could not believe I would live in London in the 21st century and have a local council say in their transport plan, quote unquote, they want greater interaction between road users and they are opposed to segregation because they say having cyclists on the road will slow the traffic down. That is Sutter's current transport plan. They didn't spill a single metre of cycling in the last four years of the last election and they're up for election tomorrow. Remember it. We said to them three years ago, if you do that policy, you are asking eight-year-olds and eight-year-olds to slow HGV trucks to slow buses, and it's not acceptable in the 21st century that our politicians are telling that. And we want it to stop today. <laughs> the economy has been failed at national, regional, and local level, and the price being paid for is not just cyclists. 54 to 60 of us have died since the last election. But those 300 pedestrians have been killed since the last election. 13,000 people have died from traffic pollution since the last election on London Street. And John, John Garthway, the professor from the University of London who's standing there, has calculated that 11,000 people have died because they're afraid to cycle to work or to school or about their, their daily jobs. 
There's, every day we could put a, a, a pile of coffins along this road, around 25 to 30 every day from traffic violence, whether it's pedestrians, cyclists, people dying from lung and heart disease and obesity. It's time to end that. And I promise you, and everybody here today knows, there is a solution to this. We don't have to endure this. Cycling, cycling, cycling is part of the solution. It's a gift. Cleaner air, cleaner planet, safer life. So finally today, just to say thank you, everybody. And on a positive, because we know cycling is wonderful. It's great. It creates people. It's healthy people. It creates communities. It creates happy kids. So let's finish today and with thanks, but with three cheers. And those who are strong enough and want to do a lift, Let's do a bike lift. Oh. And at the end of the three chairs, we'll do a bike lift. So get ready. We're going to do three chairs for cycling. Hip, hip! Hooray! Another chair for cycling. Hip, hip! Hooray! Another chair for cycling. Hooray! 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 Thank you, Okay, thank you, guys. And, uh, oh, that's great. Well, that's pretty good. Thank you for joining us, and I shall uh, see you later. I'll be back in about 9.30, where I will be live streaming from, uh, uh, from Goldsmith. So hopefully you can join us. So, thank you so much if you're watching, and uh, see you later. Peace out.